A big jump on the stock market now with Joe Biden, president-elect, and a significant development in the quest for a vaccine. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by X-Chair, introducing the XHMT Heat and Massage Work Chair, a home office chair with heat and massage therapy plus dynamic variable lumbar support at xchair.com. And by the Henry Luce Foundation, which seeks to increase American understanding of East and Southeast Asia. Learn more at hluce.org. I'm David Brancaccio. Good morning. Last week, with the presidential election clarifying, the stock market had its strongest week since April. This morning, things are up sharply again. The Dow future at the moment up 1,671 points, nearly 6%. The S&P future up 4.6%. The Nasdaq future up 1.3%. Here's Marketplace's Nova Safo. Stocks across the globe were already in positive territory, with investors upbeat after the conclusion of the U.S. election. Then Pfizer announced that its experimental COVID vaccine was more than 90% effective in a large-scale clinical trial, boosting markets even more. Pfizer, which is developing the vaccine with partner BioNTech, said it would seek emergency use authorization in the U.S. later this month. The prospect took some of the steam out of the tech-heavy NASDAQ, which has soared along with demand for streaming, online shopping, and remote work. But overall, Wall Street is optimistic. Investors are betting on less uncertainty from a Biden administration and with the high likelihood of a divided Congress on potentially more moderate policymaking out of Washington. Across the Atlantic, investors are also hoping for more predictable foreign policy and better trade relations. I'm Novasafo for Marketplace. In pre-market trading right now, Pfizer's stock is up 16 percent. BioNTech stock is up 25 percent pre-market. BioNTech of Germany, led by CEO Ugur Sahin, has the proprietary messenger RNA vaccine platform here. Pfizer has the R&D and global manufacturing heft. Now the parallels between the presidential transition period in 2008 and 12 years later. Back then, George W. Bush was leaving, Barack Obama had won, and there was severe economic turbulence and a financial and mortgage crisis. 2020, severe economic turbulence and a health care crisis. Felicia Wong is a member of the Biden Transition Advisory Board, but is speaking to us this morning from her perspective as CEO of the liberal-leaning think tank, the Roosevelt Institute in New York. Right away this week, the Biden team is going to name a pandemic task force. And interestingly, that'll be, of course, about public health, but it'll also have a lot of elements for economic strengthening. The Biden team wants to make sure that we can produce masks and PPE domestically. Uh, There's going to be a fund for state and local governments to prevent budget shortfalls, to help teachers, to help first responders, to keep those people employed, even in an economic crisis. They're talking about an emergency funding package for schools and small businesses so they can adapt to COVID. Uh, These are very immediate things that I think that task force will tackle right away. But some of this has to be in cooperation with the, at least during the transition period, uh, with the existing Senate run by Republicans. So can much really get done on spending stuff before the new Congress comes in? It's a good question. I do think you're going to see real efforts very quickly, including before inauguration, on a kind of relief plan or a stimulus package. And I think that will include all the things I just mentioned. It'll also include stronger unemployment insurance. It'll include an improved uh, mechanism for helping small businesses, maybe through rent relief, maybe through more funding to keep workers on payroll. Um, And I think it will also include funding for state governments and for city governments, which, of course, are under such crisis. That crisis, that economic crisis is only going to get worse as the winter wears on. Now, whether Republicans are going to come through and actually do this with Democrats is an important political question. But I think they are definitely incentivized to do that uh, now that they know who is going to be in charge in Washington. And you're going to see a lot of red state governors wanting that funding, in addition, of course, to all state governors, blue state governors. Felicia Wong is CEO of the Roosevelt Institute. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And in addition to promised early action on the pandemic, the economy, civil rights and climate change, expect a new head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The Supreme Court this year awarded presidents the power to pick who runs the CFPB, an agency that was reined in during the Trump administration.
Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Avalara. Since 2004, Avalara has been helping businesses streamline and automate their tax compliance processes with cloud-based rate, rule, and filing technology. Avalara, tax compliance done right. A-V-A-L-A-R-A dot com. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. The government has designated tomorrow as a National Registration Day for Economic Impact Payments. These are the $1,200 a person pandemic relief checks the government has been sending out since April to help get people through this COVID economy. Millions still have not gotten their stimulus checks because the IRS doesn't have their payment information and there's a hard deadline approaching. File for it or lose the money. Marketplace's Justin Ho has more. The IRS has been using tax return data to automatically send individuals their $1,200 relief checks. But people with little or no income aren't required to file tax returns. Leandra Letterman is a professor of tax law at Indiana University. Part of the concern is just simply the government not necessarily having the records of every person who's entitled to get a payment. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities estimates that roughly 12 million people in the U.S. aren't eligible to receive their payments automatically. But Chris Cox, the group's senior tax policy analyst, says it's vital that those people know they're still entitled to relief aid. Getting money into the hands of very low-income people is one of the highest bang for the buck policies you can have during a recession. The IRS says it sent letters to nearly 9 million so-called non-filers, urging them to register so they can receive their checks. The deadline to do that is November 21st. I'm Justin Ho for Marketplace. And McDonald's stock is up 3.7% right now, pre-market, after it said its sales at comparable stores were up 4.6% July to September. A lot of people in the drive through during pandemic. And recapping, the Dow future up 1,671 points, nearly 6% now. I'm David Brancaccio, Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.